Hey everyone, Ryan here or MNR Productions and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars 75299 Trouble on Tatooine set with 276 pieces and three minifigures. In the United States, this is going to retail for 30 bucks, and for that $30, you're getting the Child and the Mandalorian with his Beskar armor, new for 2021 there with the Mando, and a Tusken Raider. Very coveted with the Mando and the Child there for 30 bucks. It's by far the cheapest way you can obtain both of these figures. It's pretty amazing, actually, that they're doing this so soon for two very coveted LEGO Star Wars minifigures and obviously very requested with the Mandalorian in Beskar armor. Now Lego did send me this set for free so huge thank you to Lego for hooking me up with this copy of the set. As always they're keeping that side box art love that for the Lego Star Wars sets and they're keeping the white greebling uh, in the 2021 so they're keeping that uniformity across the line and in this case since it's a Mandalorian set they put the Mandalorian on the top right of the box so that's pretty cool. Flipping us around back you can see the ballista the Tusken Raider hut with the little fire pit and of course Mando coming along to him. He, Tusken Raider ain't doing anything wrong. Mandalorian, this is a stick up. Give me all your money. I don't know what's going on there. And of course you have Baby Yoda just toting along. Doesn't seem to know. Not a care in the world from Baby Yoda. But yeah, that's pretty much the box. Very nice box art as usual. I'm going to do a quick unboxing. We'll see if there's anything different about these uh, unboxings for 2021 for Lego Star Wars. I'm guessing not, but you never know. So it's worth taking a peek into it. And plus, who doesn't like seeing a Lego set get open? Anyway, looks like we're going to get three numbered bags because I can't imagine there's more than three. So one three and finally two probably having the most pieces and then if we get the instruction manual it's actually a large instruction manual wow i don't know why this is so big but let's see if there's anything different in here for 2021 as well it's always kind of interesting to just check and make sure that, that things are still the same year over year because lego does change things going into the new year oh yeah oh my god yo that is gonna be the figures for the imperial shuttle that is kind of disappointing um, but, but yeah, that's what's uh, in the back of the instruction manual. Uh, so yeah, we did get to, to learn something new there. And that is the figures for the, uh, resistance X-Wing. So there you go. We do. Oh, oh my. Okay. That's cool. Didn't expect that. That looks pretty good. All right. Um, I, this is supposed to be a review of the Tusken Raider set, but this is supposed to be a review of the Mandalorian set, but we're also kind of getting some, uh, 2021 picks a little early there. Hot damn. So the back of the instruction manual does show the March 2020-21 Lego Star Wars sets, but I don't know if I'm allowed to show those to you. So that's what's in the instruction manual. That was pretty interesting. I did not expect to see the other sets there. So that's pretty cool. But bags one, two, and three need to be built. I'll see you with the minifigures. Our first minifigure up in the set is quite mini indeed, and it is the Baby Yoda, aka the child figure. And I think from the front on, it looks good. I have definitely soured on this particular mold that Lego has after like the initial reaction of, oh my God, we have a Baby Yoda, the child minifigure, and this is great, and like life is amazing. Like that is definitely worn off at this point going into 2021. And while it does look good, and I'm sure some people are really excited to get it for 30 bucks, when you look at this angle, I mean, that just doesn't look good. Can we be really honest here? Like, the, the whole back end of Baby Yoda here being so fat and, like, just running all the way back and down. It just looks so awkward like that. So I would love to see them come in and make a special, specific Baby Yoda mold. They had a really great one in some, some advertising they had for the Razor Crest set. And I would love to see them use that in the future. So, you know, this is nice if you're, you're into it. But, I mean, look at that. It's just not all that appealing. I mean, the head is rubber and everything. That's nice and fine and dandy, just so you know. Uh, but, but as far as, like, actually being a super accurate character, I guess it doesn't really do a great job because it's a thick boy. With an actual minifigure here, we have the Tusken Raider. He has his gaffy stick, which is a nice accessory, although we have seen it, I believe, multiple times before. And this Tusken Raider is not new. It doesn't really have anything different to it that we haven't seen in previous versions. As far as I could tell, lining it up to the version that we got in the 2020 Luke's Landspeeder, all of the prints are exactly the same. But that's not to say this isn't a good figure. I mean, this is pretty much a peak Tusken Raider. It's very, very well done. The head mold is incredible with the wrapping around the head and whatever, and then all of the details for the eyes and the mouth and the, the nose and whatnot. It's just actually great with the multicolored prints. So very good figure, just one that you may already own. 
A minifigure that you certainly don't already own here is Beskar Mando. This is awesome to see. It's the first time we're ever seeing the Mandalorian in his Beskar armor. And, you know, it did take a little longer than maybe some people had hoped, but I think Lego really, really delivered here with arm printing in a $30 set. You don't see that too often, and it's great to see it here. He's got his long rifle made by a few pieces put together here on the back end. And then he actually has his like little pistol that he keeps kind of in the holster on his side there. So it's actually nice that he does have both weapons. He does have his cape, but no jetpack. But you can see the print under the cape there is incredible, even though it's gonna be covered up most of the time. And this also gives you a much better look at that arm print. You can even see the Mudhorn signet there with some really fine details. I believe like that's his like flamethrower on his arm there. And then the other side is gonna have more details with that multi-missile shooter, I believe is what that is. It has a really nice reflectiveness to it. You can see the torso, leg, and waist print is all very continuous and works really, really well together. And I do believe this is a pretty big upgrade over the last Mando figure we had. You can see they changed up the color of the helmet from a darker gray to a lighter gray, which looks great. And of course, so much about the print has changed, although some of it is very similar. A lot of the design is the same. It's just given a more silvery color, which is nice to see. So that's what you wanted out of this, basically. Unfortunately, maybe the worst part about this new Mando figure is that they have stuck with the black head. We've seen his head before. We know what he looks like. I don't understand why we don't have a face for this Beskar Season 2 Mandalorian. It just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. The set has three main builds, being the Mandalorian Speeder, the Tusken Raider Tent, and the Ballista. We'll take a look at these one by one here. And the Mandalorian Speeder is a pretty good design, about as good as you can get to have a minifigure go ahead and sit on down on the set. It also does have a little pouch for Baby Yoda on the side, which is really accurate to what you see in uh, the Mandalorian show, so that makes a lot of sense to have. And then on the other side, Side. We have a little backpack for storage, but obviously this backpack in Lego doesn't open up or actually store anything. It's just for looks. They actually added in a lot of detail on the side of this thing. Surprisingly good for as small of a speeder as it is. There's also some really interesting building techniques used to go ahead and get the look of this down and a lot of the angles down. So I found this set, especially the speeder and actually the ballista to be surprisingly fun to build. So you have a few things you can do with the Mandalorian on his speeder here. You can actually take his long rifle and place it into the clip here on the side. Fits right in. I believe you can also take the smaller blaster and place it on the side. There's clips and space for both of those things, which is really, really nice to have. And on the box, it actually does show that the Mando is able to grab onto the handlebars when you place him in his seat. And it actually is pretty nice uh, where the seat does um, allow you to only have the two studs versus the four studs so that it's easier to put him uh, on and off here. The cape is a little bit of a tough thing with this particular speeder. You got to kind of fold it up and under uh, there and then it actually fits in pretty nice without bending it too much to where it might actually uh, cause some lasting damage. So he can actually grab onto the handlebars, although I find when I try to make him grab them, uh, it does kind of pull this up and make it look a little bit weird. So I just kind of want to leave him not grabbing them. I think it's fine without him grabbing them. The angle is weird where he's kind of leaned back so far, but I think generally it's okay. And then, like I said, on the other side, there's the little pouch for Baby Yoda. He's going to fit right in there. I believe this pouch was originally designed for minifigures, so it doesn't make a ton of sense to have it on the side of a, a speeder because you can see it actually has a bit of space there. Luckily, they have this thing to hold it down, but it is really loose on it. I was building the set and I got to this and I hadn't put these on top yet. And I was like, wait, this is just going to keep falling off. But luckily, I do have something to hold it on, but it's still like wobbly versus the other one, which is not quite as wobbly. It has a bit of a stronger connection. I just found that to be a little bit distracting, but in general, it's not a big deal. And it's nice that you can actually fit Baby Yoda on the Mandalorian speeder here. Bringing the Tusken Raiders tent into frame here, you can see that there is kind of one glitch issue with the tent it's only half a tent so it doesn't really provide the full experience as a Tusken Raider tent but it is the first time we've ever seen a Tusken Raider tent in Lego so it's nice for that aspect and on top of that you could certainly buy two of these sets if you really wanted to and just combine them this is one of those cases where it would be really easy to mod something if you really wanted the full Tusken Raider tent experience I suppose now as far as the exterior of the tent there's a nice little fire camp area where you can have the Tusken Raider and perhaps other characters huddle around the fire to stay 
warm at night on Tatooine when the twin suns have set. So that's kind of neat looking, you know, not a ton of pieces to create that, but it is nice. It's a nice amount of space around there to be able to sit characters. And then you also have a clip here, which I have found is pretty good to use for the gaffy stick. I thought it would work for the pot with the bone that they included. It does not have the ability to clip on the way I thought it would. So you can just kind of place the pot nearby or you could put it in the hand of the Tusken Raider. But unfortunately, like I said, it doesn't clip on to anything nearby. Uh, you have basically the tent pole in the center, the centerpiece of the roof, and then the tent actually opens up in a pretty interesting way if you want easy access to each section. And what I also really appreciated about the tent is the way that it's kind of leveled off in weird ways. So you can see from each section, it goes from like a low ground to high ground to low ground. I thought that was unique and different way to do flooring on the interior of something. I know it was probably done for the sturdiness of the build, but I still think it creates a very fun and unique feel for this particular tent. Now looking from the exterior of the tent, you can see there's some holes in the tent. It's certainly not perfect. I honestly thought they were gonna use like a cloth piece for this when I heard it rumored and alas, it's brick built. So, I mean, this is maybe Maybe the most controversial thing in the set, if you will, that, that is in the set actually, uh, because it's half a tent and it's got a bit of a weird look, but generally uh, I think it's all right. And then finally we have the Blista, which I think is exceptionally fun. It looks really, really cool. It's not as functional maybe as you would wish because it's just not, like that's not how Lego works. Like you just couldn't do what you would want to do with this to have it actually pull back uh, the strings or whatever and then release it, thus firing the spring-loaded shooter. But you do have these things in the back which you can pretend to have it create some tension and basically load up the ballista to fire off what is it a harpoon that they fire at the crate dragon in this case actually included some very cool silver spring loaded shooters i believe this is the first time we've seen that in lego star wars so that's kind of neat to see but this generally has a really cool design i love the uh, feet that they gave it so it has this kind of low profile to the ground of course you have the cross pattern on the front it's really nice building techniques i'm going to be honest it's a fun set to build and you have these tubes these somewhat flexible tubes so that you can actually give uh, the set of bit of an angle as you see fit uh, as far as the uh, crossbow pattern on the front goes. So you can actually change that up a little bit because they use some flexible pieces here. So I thought that was rather nice, but the spring loaded shooting function is gonna work well as it does pretty much in any other set. It's a nice play feature and I think kids are gonna like it as far as a display piece. It looks fine. It doesn't detract from the look of it, especially because it's silver, right? It just kind of fits in with what it's supposed to be. So I think it's really nice for that. This is a pretty amazing set. It's not perfect and we're bound to touch on that, but I really like it. And I think a lot of other people like it too. And I think a lot of other people would agree with the idea that it is the best January slash March Lego Star Wars set. Like there's just not a lot of competition for that. But yeah, it's pretty much a must buy for me. I really, really love this and I would really recommend it to anyone. Now the one fatal flaw it has, if you will, is that it doesn't include Cobb Van. A big part of this first Season two Mandalorian episode was Cobb Vanth and Cobb Vanth rode into town or rode into the Tusken Raider town with his speeder alongside Mando, just like this. And it would have made a ton of sense to have that speeder run alongside with the set and increase the price 10 bucks. Just quite frankly, it would. And I, I think it would sell just as well, if not better, because you would have a guy in Boa Fett armor, basically. And unfortunately, that is not what we see here. We just kind of get a bare bones version of what could have been. And it's unknown why Lego didn't include Cobb Vanth. I mean, the, the leading theory is basically they didn't know in time that they could include something like that or that that would make sense in a set like this or whatever. Disney didn't tell them uh, because they did release this set as season two was airing. So it does make sense that they might not have known. This has been my review for the Lego Star Wars Mandalorian Trouble on Tatooine. You can check out my other Lego Star Wars 2021 reviews with the playlist on the end screen now.